There's something out there waiting for us. And it ain't no land. If it bleeds, we can kill it. What's going on guys, Clayton Fioriti here with another Dragon Curve video, this time talking about one of the weirdest unproduced sequels that I think I've ever heard of. Now just to make sure we're all on the same page, this unmade movie would later get retooled and totally rewritten as the 2010 film we now know as Predators, which ended up being the officially released Predator 3. But believe it or not, way back in 1996, the original version of the film would have featured the returning Arnold Schwarzenegger as Dutch, fighting a whole planet of younger predators alongside a group of mercenaries and what would eventually get revealed as a conspiracy between planet Earth and the predator creatures themselves. Honestly, so little of the 2010 film made it out of this original 1996 script, and the overall plot and feel of the film is just completely insane when you put it up against everything else. There does happen to be human-predator hybrids though, which reminds me of both that 2018 film that Shane Black eventually did, as well as the unproduced version versions of Jurassic Park 4, believe it or not. Anyways, Arnold Schwarzenegger returns as Dutch in a movie that would start out on a Spanish galleon. Invisible forces are presently attacking the ship, and apparently Dutch is on board for some reason. Eventually, these invisible forces get revealed as not being predators, but in fact humans that have decked themselves out with predator technology. The story goes that Dutch is wanted by these guys for being a deserter, and after he gets tried for his crimes, they end up taking him to a planet called Arcus 6, which is some big jungle planet it that I'm going to assume was the basis for what would eventually become the 2010 film. When the team reaches Arcus 6, they eventually run into a crucified predator that has been abandoned by someone on the planet. Dutch tries to escape his captors after this happens, only to be surprised by the arrival of like 50 predators who capture the humans with their net guns and proceed to take them away. Dutch disappears. Now, after that, the humans were allegedly going to be forced into combat with younger predators who were in the process of proving their worth. Other alien species were also being captured and used as gladiators in order to help these younger preds get experience. Dutch manages to utilize that age-old trick of putting mud on his body to camouflage his heat signature, but most of the other humans aren't so lucky. It's later suggested that it can't be any mere coincidence that the technology between the humans and the predators is so similar. And sure enough, in what I guess would have been this film's big twist, it gets revealed that one of the humans that sent the crew who captured Dutch to Arcus 6 was actually in the middle of some kind of trade deal with the predator species in order to keep humans on top of the food chain. Apparently they'd entered some kind of contract for humans to trade lives for the predators to fight in exchange for cutting edge alien technology. This is where those modified humans with body parts of other alien species is brought up. Now this whole movie was supposed to end in a crazy battle where the quote king predator was going to try and hunt down Dutch only to have the crucified predator from that earlier scene in the movie freed so that both Dutch and this old renegade predator would have a fighting chance defending one another. After Dutch kills the king he and the good predator would get in a ship and I guess make their way back to planet earth. Now this movie was supposed to follow up Predator 2 a few years after it had come out, and since the script is dated for 1996, I'm going to guess that we could have expected to see it sometime around 97 or 98, which was the same time that Alien Resurrection was coming out. Personally, while I do think some of this stuff sounds kind of cool, and I'd openly welcome an Arnold Schwarzenegger return anytime, I gotta say that a lot of this plot sounds absolutely ridiculous. I don't know why people always want to try and force the predator species to work together or help humans, but it's just never set right with me. And I also think it's kind of strange to imagine that this would have been how the filmmakers would choose to follow up on the culture of the predator species after the events of the second film, but either way, it's totally bonkers and never really got made. I will say I do find it interesting though that it starts off on like that big Spanish 
his ship after Predator 2 ended with Danny Glover receiving the old tiny pistol from the elder Predator. Now, I say this movie never really got made because, as we all know, eventually Robert Rodriguez did come back and offered up what we got in 2010. But that film was pretty damn different when you put it up against this original draft. Now, back when Predators was in production, Robert Rodriguez had this to say about the version from 1996. Quote, it's the story from that script I had written way back then. They had hired me to write a Predator story while I was waiting to do Desperado back in 1995. It was crazy, this thing I came up with. So then fast forward to now, and like six months ago, they found the script and called me up. Hey, we want to redo this franchise and we found your old script. This is where we should have gone with the series. We want to move forward. And that's what we're doing. Well, eventually everything would get changed and instead of this bonkers Arnold Schwarzenegger romp in space against predator gladiators and humans trying to trade lives for tech with the creatures, we got a much more simplistic story where a group of humans was kidnapped in order for the predators to hunt them on a planet version of a nature preserve. Personally, I think the movie they wound up making makes better sense and sounds better, but hey, that's just me. I will admit though that this old draft does sound super fun on some weird level, but it also comes off as just more of the really goofy stuff that the company was already doing with the Alien franchise back in the day. Cloning Ripley is kind of weird, don't you guys think? <laughs> Either way, I do think that it's a pretty cool piece of history, and I'm sure a lot of people haven't really heard too much about it at all. And with that being said, I'd love to hear what all of your thoughts are. What are your opinions on this abandoned version of Predator 3? And how well do you think it would have been received in the 1990s? Whatever your own thoughts and opinions happen to be, I'd love to hear them in the comments down below.